Hey there, Bob here from Insidium Top Tip Tuesday time. On today's video, we'll be recreating this nice abstract fluid sim. We'll be exploring Nexus Color and the new neighbor search mode, which is part of the current beta. Remember, it's your last chance now to get involved in the Insidium Black Friday sale. 50% off everything, that's including subscriptions as well. This ends on Wednesday, the 3rd of December at midnight UK time. So get involved before it's too late. Okay, let's get started. In our scene here, we have a very basic fluid sim setup. We've got a turbulence, a fluids, and a gravity modifier. You can dig into the scene file to see how that was set up, but it's pretty basic. Let's go into our Redshift camera here, which is a top down view, and you can see our fluid sim. Okay, we want to color these particles. Let's bring in a Nexus color, and this color we are going to use a gradient by parameter actually. In defaults, it's going to map the particles according to their speed. So it's mapping this blue to white gradient here to the particle speed, slow particles blue, fast particles white. We don't want to do this effect in this instance. We're going to do a neighbor search instead. So let's change this parameter from speed to neighbor. And we're going to say every particle should look within, say, 40 centimeters of itself. And if it has, this is what this is saying is, if it has zero neighbors within 40 centimeters, it'll be blue. If it has 100 or more neighbors within 40 centimeters, it will be uh, white. Uh, we're going to increase this a bit. I'm going to try this on maybe 8,000. Let's have a look. What do we have? Yep, so now we have got some a nice kind of variation. You can see these parts of the sim where there's loads of neighbors. We've got that white, and then obviously it fades off into the blue as the particle neighbors get uh, less and less. All right, so that's looking pretty good. What I want to do, we're not going to use color now. We're just going to color this using black and white values and then do all of the actual coloring at render time. It gives us more flexibility. So let's load a preset. I've got a black and white preset set here. So now when we hit play, this is just black and white values. Very cool. So we could just leave it at that. Another effect that we're able to do with this setup though is we can kind of isolate these perimeter surface particles on the edges here by doing a different type of neighbor search. So what I'm going to do is look, just copy this layer and hold control, copy it. Now these are both in normal blend mode. So this bottom layer is going to be ignored for now. So let's work on the top one and then we'll reintroduce it. So instead of having our neighbor search like this with these gray values in our gradient, what I'm going to do is double click and just twirl that down and change the interpolation between these two knots to step. So now it's either black or white. So if we hit play, you'll see that all of our particles are black with a few white ones in the middle. So what we want to do is isolate this. Let's move that white knot in. So it's only the very outside bits that are black. Let's bump that up a bit. So at the moment, this search um, radius is too great for us to get these nice defined border particles sorted. So let's reduce that down to say 10. And we'll just reduce this range. This range doesn't need to be anywhere near this big. Let's put this on, say, 200. And that, by reducing that, it should allow us just to kind of confine that a little bit more. Yeah, look, we're just getting those edge ones. As we drag that up, we're getting more and more of those edge particles included in this black outline. That's looking really cool. Okay, so now we want to mix that with what was underneath. So all we need to do with this layer if we set it to multiply, it means that only the black will kind of be uh, will show through and we will reveal that other gradient by parameter that we did with our bottom layer. So, yeah, look, we're getting the um, white to gray and then we've got our black perimeter particles. So that's looking really nice. What I'm going to do is now we've got that color sorted, I'm actually going to cache these particles out. So let's go to Insidium Cache. I'll just build this cache. This will only take 30 seconds or so. I'll pause it now, come back to when it's finished and we'll uh, we'll move on to the meshing and the coloring. 
Okay, so that cache has finished. It took a minute and 20 seconds to do 270 frames. And we've got this really nice, pretty high particle count detailed sim with this animating black and white color according to the neighbor data. Excellent. Right, so now what we want to do is mesh these particles. So we're going to bring in an excess mesher for our GPU meshing. We're going to drag in the emitter into our layers window here and what we want to do is reduce our part, uh, polygon size to maybe 1.5 to make this higher detail let's reduce the radius down to say 2.5 and now we want to add some smoothing so we can add a smoothing modifier let's change this to mean curvature smoothing full strength and then we can increase the iterations to get it smoother and smoother let's try it on five five's looking good for now we may smooth more should we wish and now what we need to do is before we start rendering is pass on that black and white particle color data into the mesh we do that by going to the export tags we transfer the color and that generates a color vertex map and if we view this you'll see yes that vertex map is storing that particle color the last thing we need to do before we start rendering is you want these transitions from white to black to be as smooth as possible and we can smoothen that further by adding some smoothing this isn't to the mesh this, this is to the uh, the point uh, the, uh, the the particle color so let's put this on say just five for now we shall smoothen that off somewhat okay so now that we have got that we want to start rendering so if we go to our redshift render view window let's just dock that up here and if we start rendering there is our mesh now we want to set up a material for this so let's go to our material manager we've got a pre set up material here that's not quite ready if we drop this on our mesh you'll see that we're getting this um well it's a glass material and we can just see the colored lights of our scene reflected in it let's open up our material and we need to just make some adjustments so what we have here is a standard material in redshift and we have got our transmission on one so it's a glass material and in that glass color we're feeding in this color gradient here with a ramp node with these colors but we're not seeing those reflected in our mesh and that's because what we need to do is open up those black and white color values and feed those into our ramp which will then recolor them with these custom colors how do we do that we need to let's double click we need to bring in a vertex attribute node now this node just allows us to use a vertex map uh, and reference the colors from that vertex map or color vertex map so all we need to do with our attribute node selected drag in that color vertex map into the attribute name and if i solo this you'll see yep there's our black and white values brilliant so then if we feed those um, color values into our ramp let's go forward a frame and yes now we have got these really cool ramp colors being passed on into our mesh and because we have fed in that vertex information as the alternative input we're getting these really cool stripes and colors in our mesh and this is all driven by our particle neighbor search so obviously frame by frame this animates it evolves and we get that really nice kind of liquid flow of these um, abstract gradient colors